Hi, welcome to Penny's Crafts Creations. Thanks for joining me. I have, um, I'm working with a beetle on wire, trying to use that and see how it works. This one is a 20 gauge and I picked it up at Hobby Lobby. They come with instructions on the back for um, learning how to do it and everything. And it explains over here the wire hardness scale and everything. So I'm using a jade stone. Um, I picked this up at Joann's when they did their four for 20 on some of their um, beads. Or was it four for 10? I think it was actually a four for 10 sale they had. So I'm gonna play with this one now. And I have two lengths. This one's about seven seven inches long and I want to create a bale at the top so I'm going to decide where I want my bale to be Just about here and I'm doing it like I would if I was creating it with a head pin I'm wrapping it tightly around that piece right there and I'm getting it as tight as I can to that top piece then once I reach where I want it, I'm going to tuck it in against the other wire and fix my bail so it looks like this. So if you've done head pins or um, eye pins and done beads beading before, then you know how that would work. And just tuck it into your bead. And sometimes that wire will fit, will show. I would like it to show. Um, it can go down in. So I'm just going to leave it like this and hope it stays that way. Then I only have a little bit of wire here. I want to give it a 90 degree angle because I want to play with another piece of wire on this. And I want to create a couple of different swirly designs. So I'm just going to grab it here and work it around. So I have that looking like that. I'm going to bring that up so it's now in the center of my bead. I'm going to leave that one there because I want to come back to the end here. And I'm just going to work that into that spiral. And sometimes the wire is soft enough, which this one seems to be that you can move that spiral on its own but I want a loose spiral because I want to be able to add wire into it like I did with the little jar that I had done in another video and I want to join these two right there so I want to get that to be right about there bend it in a little bit so I'm going to join these two and I have some gold wire. Um, I also got this at Hobby Lobby on clearance for 99 cents. It's on a wire. It's 28 gauge so it's a lot skinnier and it's not silver. I do have some silver but I like to mix up my wires and I think this is a good one to do that on. Now if you've ever sewn then you can easily do the wire wrapping. You're going to pop this through and then you want to get it to come up here. So give it a little kink in your wire. And I have used a sewing needle to do this as well. Sometimes it doesn't want to work. So you just got to play with it a little bit. And where you have it open, you can bend it to create that look. Just bring it up. Bring your other end up too. And bring that through. So you have two ends popping through that little hole there. See, so you, you see the wires popped through both. You're going to shorten one of your ends here because you don't want to have that whole thing. So shorten it a little bit. You're not going to need all of it. I'm going to cut some of the excess off there. And then just like you're sewing a button on, you're going to go back and forth. And you're creating that little 
connection ring between the two of them. Like right there. And once you get it to where you want it, then you trim your wires. So again, just like you're sewing, and you're gonna pull tight when you're doing this. So you can see that that is growing in that connection. So once you get it to where you want it, go ahead and trim off the ends. And you want to tuck those ends in. You don't want them to be showing very well. So I just pinch it with the pliers and the ends are tucked in. So I'm going to push this back to where I had it before. Okay, so we have that simple design on it looking like that. You can play around with your wire up here, get it to where you want it. I wanted that little separation gap. Okay, so I have that piece looking like that right now. So far it looks like that. And I have that little bump out I have up here. So I can still play around with it where I have it this way. And I'm going to take my other wire. And now comes your tricky part because you have this freestanding wire and it's holding it now. So you need to decide where you want to add your wire. You can add it down in here in that little thing. I'm going to add it here. But I'm not going to use the whole 22 inches, so I'm just going to cut about 8 inches. And I want another swirl. So I'm going to do that pattern with the swirl. I really like using them. I think they're kind of like a little bit mixed, mystical looking. And I want to get it so that it's really a nice size swirl on there really opened up so when you're doing them opened you just want to grab just this part here and give it that swirl so there we have that and I'm going to twist this around so my swirl is there now I have that end, and I'm going to cover this with wire like we did down here, but I'm going to do that off camera because I don't want to take too much of your time here. I'm going to come back through and grab up here into this piece. I have to bend my wire a little bit. Now I'm going to come up and around there. And it's going to be tricky because your wire is going to want to move around on you. Pull tight. So it's pulled tight now to the bead. And that's how it looks. This part here, right here, will be covered with the other wire. So I'm not going to worry about that little gap in there. And the same with this part here. That part there will also be covered with wire. So I'm going to do another swirl because I have all this empty space on the back. I'm going to do a big swirl here. And I'm going to do it tighter in the center and then get larger as I go inward. I 
I'm going to crisscross down here. And then I'm going to meet it here and I'm going to attach wire there as well. And I will come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so I finished it and I turned my flash on so that you can see it a little bit better. I've added a few things to it, like this piece here on the top. And at each of the joins, I use that technique that I showed you in the first part of this video. So that you can see all the joins. And I added a couple more wires. So I use that same technique on all of the joins here. I wrapped it around the top. And this is going to be part of a chunky chain that I'm going to be working on. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they're called, but that's what I call them. So that will go on my stand over here. And what I call a chunky chain, I'm not sure if that's what everybody else calls them. This is what I call them. They're filled with charms and beads. So that is gonna be the bottom part, like this here and like this one here is a bottom and this one was a simple wire and i use the same wire for wrapping this one so that's what that type of bead looks like i will show you some more um probably next week because i have my grandchild um coming for the weekend and then my grandson's next week so thank you for watching and have a great day